Okay, so when I started working from home, I was unproductive, I was lazy, and I would just get so distracted by things. And honestly, a big problem was this thing right here, especially apps that go like this. Now I know firsthand because I was a data engineer working at one of those companies that builds the apps that everyone gets distracted by. But I actually quit that job to build better, healthier tech. And throughout this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tech to help you stay productive. Make sure you watch until the end to see the last bonus tip that really helped me going into 2022. Staying focused while working from home is all about building good habits. And when I asked you guys on Instagram what your biggest distraction was, 90% of the people said their phone. Ironically, right? While we were on Instagram. In the book Atomic Habits, the author says to set goals and build systems to keep you on track to reach those goals. The best way to get rid of bad habits that lead to distractions and unproductiveness, if that's a word, <laughs> is to replace them with good habits that keep you focused. In this way, you are replacing these habits so that they come naturally, literally makes you feel different day to day, and really helps you become the person that you wanna be. The first step to eliminate bad, distracting habits is to make those things invisible. That saying, out of sight, out of mind, is really true. So if your phone is distracting you, putting it out of reach is the first good step. You can even go as far as putting it in a different room, like I put mine in my bedroom. But the best tip is to throw your phone across the room and break it, so you never have to use it again. And you'll never be distracted. Just kidding. I actually do throw my phone across the room sometimes onto the couch without breaking it, because it's a super easy way to get it away from you, and it makes it hard to go get. So next time you feel that urge to look at your phone, throw it across the room or put it in a different room where you can't see it. There's a couple other tips like using the Screen Time app on iOS and there's also a few Android apps. Another tech tip is to buy a lockbox that you can put your phone in, set a timer for the focus session that you want to have, and then it won't let you open it until the timer goes off. This might seem kind of weird, but if that's what's preventing you from reaching your goals and doing the things that you want to do, then who cares? Like you can just do it reach your goals, who cares? The next tip is to make bad distracting habits more difficult. If you make something harder for you to do, you're a lot less likely to do it. Your subconscious brain, without even thinking about it, will not trigger you to go do something if that thing is really difficult to do. For example, going to pick up your phone. If you do need your phone for certain things for work, delete the distracting apps from your phone while you're working throughout the day. You can re-download them after you're done, but it does take a little work sometimes to log back in, so that's actually good if you wanna eliminate that bad habit. Some people might get distracted by websites on their computer, and for that, you can use an app called Freedom, which basically blocks certain websites for a certain amount of time or whatever you set it at. The last step is to make distracting habits unsatisfying and unattractive. The same thing kind of happens here with your brain, where if something is not attractive or it's not satisfying, you're a lot less likely to do it. My tech tip here is to unfollow accounts that don't really align with your day-to-day -day goals. Think about it, if you associate this app with all of these things that give you a hit of dopamine every time you open it, for a lot of us it's like fancy cars or houses, basically flashy things, those are satisfying and instantly gratifying, which is not always the best for what our goals are. It might actually make those apps a little bit more boring for you, but that's the point if there are distractions in your life. Speaking of distractions, here's a car alarm. Great. The best way to eliminate bad hap- Dang it. Dude, how long is this gonna go? The best way to overcome bad habits is to replace them with good habits. The first step here is to make good focus habits obvious. So put good healthy things close to you and where you'll see them often. For example, you could put a whiteboard on the wall that lists out your tasks for the day. So you'll always see it when you walk by or glance up. Also keep focus and work tools out on your desktop, both your real desktop and your computer desktop. Little tips might be to keep a productivity playlist at the top of your music player. Keep notepads and pens around. I actually never put away my recording equipment so that it's like a constant reminder to work on YouTube and content creation, which is one of my big goals. The second tip is to make good focus habits easy. There's this saying that done is better than perfect. Thinking about that in your head makes tasks 
that require productivity seem easier and less daunting. That makes your work easier to start, so you'll be more likely to get started. And once you start, you usually keep going. Breaking big tasks into chunks is also a really good strategy. I like to use a Pomodoro timer to break an hour and a half of work into three 25 minute chunks with breaks in between. I always keep that Pomodoro timer on my desktop so that when I open my laptop, it reminds me to start it and focus. The third tip is to make good focus habits attractive and satisfying. In other words, treat yourself. Do keep in mind that you want your rewards to be healthy and contribute to your goals and not take away from them. So reward yourself with a good stretch, maybe your favorite song after listening to a study playlist through your focus session, texting a friend and then focusing and then waiting for their reply maybe during the break. You can also keep healthy snacks around. Those rewards help make focus habits satisfying. You can also make the habit more attractive, which is a little bit different. For example, you could go to a coffee shop or your favorite park specifically to work. That makes it satisfying because you're going to a place that you love and combining it with something that's productive. You can also reward yourself with productivity gear, like some noise canceling headphones or a set of notebooks or maybe an iPad, if you're balling, you know. Accountability is actually one of the most effective ways to stay focused and productive throughout the day. This is because we are social creatures by nature. And so we don't wanna let other people down when we tell them that we're gonna do something. Find like-minded people, maybe they have a similar goal, and tell them what your goals are for the day or for the week. These could be friends, people you meet online, your manager, or maybe a team member at work, someone who you really don't want to let down. I have an accountability buddy that I met on social media who also makes productivity and tech content. Sharing that similar goal helps us build a connection that really makes the accountability meaningful. That motivates me to stick with my habits like posting consistently, which helps me reach my bigger goals over the longer term. That brings up another point, which is to focus on helping others. Telling someone that you're going to help them puts this responsibility on you. It's a healthy responsibility if you choose it. And it's super satisfying to be able to help other people. In terms of tech, you can use Zoom to schedule focus sessions with friends. One YouTuber named Study with Tina actually streams her focus sessions and chats with the people studying with her in the small breaks in between those focus sessions, which I might do, so be on the lookout for that. And lastly, it's good to track your progress so you can see what's actually working for you. You can use the Boost Habit Tracker, which I built, that lets you do almost all of these things. You set daily habit goals, like studying or working for a certain number of hours, and you can connect with other people who have similar goals. It feels awkward at first to partner up with someone just for accountability and focus, but over time, when you work together, that connection really grows and that relationship becomes really powerful. Those are some of the best relationships when you share values and goals with someone else. I'm curious if you have other habits for focus that you do while working from home. Let me know in the comments and I might share it on Instagram. Speaking of that, follow me on Instagram. I'm Boost Productivity Jake, all one word. And speaking of that, following productivity influencers helps make those apps a little bit more healthy. If you could give this video a like so that more people see this kind of content and subscribe for more videos. All right, thanks guys. See ya.